Chris Dunganier, founder of the Conscious Education Podcast. This is a live session filmed in our Magnetic Mind Masterclass, which is a coaching program. If you hear me uh, referring to some of the guests or talking to people, this was recorded when it was live. And so you're not able to uh, comment or chat uh, to me, obviously. Enjoy this session and uh, do subscribe or share it if you think it's valuable. Bye for now. So today we've got a really, really, really uh, um, on point, I guess, uh, topic. We're going to talk about synergistic relationships. And, uh, and the thing is, is that synergistic uh, and harmonious relationships, I think, uh, are very, very, very important. There's not many things that we want to achieve in life that don't involve another human being. You know, for most of us, even if we want to have a nice house or, you know, uh, get a nice car or, or start a business, you know, there's, there's typically lots of, uh, lots of, thanks, Karen. <laughs> got to write, hey, Jesse M, I need to write Karen Munger a note because she missed out. Where's, where's Jesse? Someone needs to remind me. <laughs> um, what was I talking about? <laughs> Synergistic relationships. There's not many things that uh, we do that don't involve another human being, whether, and then obviously it goes right down to relationship with ourselves, relationship with our intimate partners, relationship with our family, our friends, our coworkers, maybe a boss, maybe staff. So lots and lots of relationships with other people. We also have relationships with parts of this experience that we that that give or take something from us so for example we all have a relationship with money is it true we all have a relationship with with money we all have a relationship with the government we all have a relationship with society as a whole but we also have a relationship with success and a relationship with failure a relationship with uh with hard work so there's lots, of, uh, there's lots of relationships. And so today is about creating synergy in a relationship. So what is synergy? Synergy is when the outputs are greater or the sum is greater than the inputs. So one plus one equals 11 in a synergistic relationship rather than uh, one plus one equaling two. So we wanna have synergy. And for me, this has become something that's very, very important because I've come to realize that uh, the most important thing in my life is creating synergy between myself and other people, where everyone gets more out of what it is we do. I have a relationship with every single one of you on this call, and I hope that our relationship uh, bears fruit for everyone involved, yourself, myself. I have a relationship with uh, my team, and my goal is to ensure that every single one of us gets more out of the relationship than less. And, and to really, really think about that more out of the relationship with the same input. So, so I think relationships are very, 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 very important, but it's something that, you know, wasn't always easy. Uh, I've had many different relationships or, or uh, focuses in my life that haven't, haven't worked out. And relationships seem to follow very interesting patterns. Those of you who have done the Superconscious Creator course, you, you understand and know uh, that that, that what, what we really are up to here is, is trying to understand ourselves and our own dysfunctional patterns. A lot of times our dysfunctional patterns involve other people. So for example, I had a, a pattern of relationship with, uh, with my, started with my father being my, um, he was my sports coach and I always wanted to impress him. I always wanted to be the star. I replaced him with multiple different people to fill the exact same role and it all ended in the same result, okay? The result was I would start out wanting to impress them. I would become the star. I would overtake whatever it is that, that they could expect. They would be super proud, and then it would all collapse. And this happened on repeat until I finally saw it. You know, I did it again in business. I did it in uh, my music and DJing career. Uh, I did it in sport with other coaches. And it was, a, it was a very, there was the same pattern over and over and over and over again. And it kept on happening, it kept on breaking and it kept on changing. I did the same thing with money. So I had a relationship with money where I always felt that it owed me something, that it was something I had to grab and catch. And I didn't have a good relationship with it. And I would always grab and catch and it would feel like when I got it, it was always trying to run away. I didn't have a good relationship with it. 
I had a very similar relationship with the government granting Harriet and I visas to live in a certain country for over a, a decade. Well, actually it was longer than that for both of us. What was interesting is both of us in our teenage years had our parents separate and both of us left where we were where we grew up and went out on our own very early. Both of us before before the age of 18 were living on it by ourselves and uh, we had a relationship that we're not really allowed to live where we were living. And so we would manifest consistent, consistently this relationship where we, you know, President Trump got elected. So we no longer had the right visa in the United States and then had to go to the uh, uh, to the UK. And then we're in the UK and um, my money didn't qualify for a visa there. So I did so because uh, all my money was earned in the US. And so the UK were like, well, you don't have any money here, so you don't get a visa. So then we got kicked out of there. Then it took four and a half years for, for Harriet to get to a visa here in Australia. And it was a continual same relationship. And so what I've found is there's, there's certain ways that we're in relationship with lots of different things. And, and that relationship forms some very um, distinct energetic patterns, okay? And, uh, and I want to draw them out because every relationship uh, that you have is, is going to be in one of these, uh, one of these patterns. So I'll just put my uh, camera up a little bit. And so the end result of today is that all of us are able to... to uh, get into the correct relationships that we desire, uh, enjoy them, understand which ones we're in or not in, and then we'll do a brilliant perception shift recode. So we'll have some fun. We'll have some fun. We'll help you with that. Nicole says, my relationship with the government is not good. Let's shift that because you want to have a good one. They're not going anywhere. Is it true? Nicole, they're not going anywhere, so you want to have a good one. Okay, so the first type of uh, energetic uh, relationship is codependent. And codependent are actually two, uh, two people that are both unfulfilled and they are filling up with another, another person. They, they're not, uh, they depend on the other person. Each needs the other. Does that make sense? Codependent. And so each individual needs the other individual to, to feel whole. If it wasn't for the other one, okay, they would, they would literally look like that. You see, they're not whole without the other person. That's codependent. The problem is, is when someone's codependent and the other person leaves, all of a sudden you feel that there's a void in your life. And can I ask, is this synergistic? Does one plus one here equal 11? Or right here, does one plus one just equal one whole, <laughs> 1.5 or something like that? It's not very uh, synergistic, isn't it? Okay, so that's the, the first way we can be in relationship. So you want to ask yourself, which relationships in your life do you feel codependent? Is your sense of well-being dependent on another? Okay. The next one is controlled. This is where one person or one of them is bigger and the other one is smaller. So this is controlled. So we have codependent and now we have control. Now, does that seem very synergistic to you? If this equals, you know, 1.5, this, this equals just, just one, doesn't it? So we have one little and then one big, okay? So that's controlled. Then, then we have the opposite of this, which is where the outside is uh, shaded in. So this is controlled and this is in control. Do you guys see the difference? So this one is you're the little one. And the, the, the big one, this one is that you're the big, you're the outside. I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and shade the whole thing in today. And then there's the, the inner one as well. Does everyone see that? So one is controlled, one is in control. Again, it's not synergistic at all. So we've got codependent, controlled, we've got in control. Uh, let's see, I might just go this way. Okay, so then that, the next one uh, that we have is a loop. A loop is when they're just completely separate. They don't, they don't even have this. And for a lot of times, I would find myself, I would just become a loop with certain people in my life. I would just disconnect completely. 
And, and we, we don't even really think about this like it is any sort of uh, relationship, okay? So I just want you to consider the relationships in your life right now. Uh, your intimate relationship, your relationship with your staff, uh, your relationship with government, your relationship with money, your relationship with your kids. And, and I just want you to just acknowledge, you know, are, are any of these uh, feeling like you might be in them, you know? Are you sometimes feeling that you're codependent? If they, if your kids, if your kid didn't like you, you weren't able to like yourself. Or, or if, if the money's not giving it to you, you can't be happy. You see, there's a codependent relationship. Are you controlled? Are you trying to keep it small and it can't get bigger than you? Are you trying to be in control? I think a lot of bosses work like this. They only let their staff have to be smaller than them. Hey. So the, the next one, and the one that we want to get to, is where there is a perfect synergy. And as the energy flows from one, energy flows back like that. Does that make sense? That this is where we, where we really want to get to. And we, and we just call this functional. And this is how we want our relationship to be. But then we want it just to touch. We want to have two holes that feed back into each other. And then it creates, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Does that make sense? That's what we're wanting. We're wanting functional. You want to have a functional relationship with money where you give it money and what you get back is, is the, the rewards of, of that. You give, you give back services, then you get it back, you give back. You want to have this with your kids. You want to be able to give and then get back and then give and then get. And it's, it, it's great. You want to have this with your spouse. It's functional. It's functional. And so in your relationships, you're either in a functional relationship with it or you're not, or you're not. So let's pick a relationship and you don't have to type this in, but let's pick a relationship that we want to work on today. And, then, and let's start to think about that relationship, whether it's a relationship with money, whether it's a relationship with a spouse, whether it's relationship with uh, government, whether it's relationship with uh, success. See, my relationship with success, yeah, uh, Martha says food, is I used to try to be in control. I needed to control the success, you know? Uh, or maybe even codependent. If it wasn't for the success, I couldn't be happy. I needed it. If it left, I was nothing. So every relationship in your life, which is how you relate to it, is going to be in one of these, isn't it? And, and that's really, really, really important to consider uh, which, which one you're in. And you might shift between those, okay? And, and so you might be aloof. You might go, here's you, here's success. You know, you don't, here's you, here's money. You don't even connect. You might have a, a child or a family member that, that you're aloof with. That's fine. You might have somewhere you feel codependent, where if, and the way you know that you're codependent, if they weren't there, all of a sudden you would feel, you know, like really like you, you've lost something, you know, you're, you're dependent on that. And, and a lot of us even get taught that's the way it's supposed to be. You know, you complete me. So I know I complete me and you complete you. And together we create a completely different energy. True, we complete this new energy called us, but I'm whole and you're whole. True, isn't it true? Isn't that a good way to think about it? See, when two whole and complete uh, people are are able to be in uh, in relationship, then what what comes from that is complete magic. Complete magic. And so if you're a coach and you're ever working with a client or if you're someone right now that wants to work on relationships, this is going to be very, very important. See, most of us don't get to the functional uh, relationship because 
we're out of touch or out of perspective of what the other person wants to be given and to give to the relationship. See, functional requires an understanding of where the relationship is supposed to go and what each party is, is role is in that, you see? Typically, relationships break down and end up becoming aloof because people don't understand what the other person really, really wants. See, in order to have a synergistic and functional relationship between yourself and your staff, you've got to know what they want. If you want a functional relationship between you and money, you must understand what money wants. If you want to have a functional relationship between you and the government, you must understand. And you must get in that perspective because not uh, giving energy to it allows you to get no energy back. So first, you need to be going to the same end result. So any relationship you're in, the first thing you must do is clearly understand the end result that they want. The clear end result. The second thing is you need to understand how they choose to get there. How they choose to get there. Kim said, how would I know what money wants? Well, money is just a measurement. So all that money wants to do is to measure value. That's all it wants to do. It will flow to people who give a lot of value to other human beings. And that's all it wants. It's all it wants. It just wants to measure value. It's just a thing that humans made up so that we could exchange and, and trade. It's all it wants to do. Okay, so you need to be going to the same end result. You need to understand how it chooses to get there. So if there's any dysfunctional relationship, the first thing and sometimes the hardest thing is to really do a land of plenty, choices and, and blue mist and get choices down there for, for everyone that you work with. One of the things that I have all of my team do and all of the leaders of their departments do is to truly understand what that human being really desires. What that human being really truly desires because we know at Conscious Education that if we can help someone get what they desire, then we are able to be a part of this functional relationship where they are able to give back what we desire, which is to have you know, uh, great staff, highly motivated. That's what we want to give. And then we, what we want to give back is opportunities and salaries and it's functional and everyone's happy. There's no bigger or smaller. Does that make sense, everyone? We understand what they want, what their choices are so that they can, they can get what they want and we can get what we want. Okay, then we need to choose how that they want to get there. So that, that's very important. Okay. What's very, very fascinating is there is a huge amount of conflict that gets created between people and, 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 and between those in relationships. And this conflict comes down to how we communicate. Because have, how many of you have found one of the hardest things to answer in life is what do I really choose to create? So if you just sit down with someone and say, so what are your choices? It's very likely that they don't know as well. And then if you ask them, well, how are you going to get there? It's likely that they have an inability to communicate it back. And so... <laughs> I'm getting some good feedback here. Who's enjoying this? This out this deep? You enjoying it? <laughs> so we create conflict because communication is, especially the, the English language and communication, is a, is a very difficult way to translate our true essence and our true feelings. Basically, language is such a, a weak tool it's the best one we've come up with but it's such a weak tool to try to explain our, our truth it's just a symbol and it becomes very difficult because 
I guess there's a little saying, can someone just write this in, is that uh, a map is not the territory it represents. So, you know, you hold a map of Australia, it's not Australia, it's a, it's a diagram of it, you know? And so a map is not the territory it represents. But if the map is correct, it has a similar structure to the territory, which accounts for its usefulness. So, so it, it is a useful thing to have a map, but the map of your city isn't the city, you know? And, and I think everyone gets it. A map is obviously a thing on your phone or a piece of paper that's just a 2D diagram of it. So it's, it's obviously not the city. And, and when you think about that, the map is not what, we're actually, what we actually have, you know? You don't, you really get that. That's what language is. See, language is really just the map that we are, uh, or the model or the metaphor or the, the symbol that we're using to describe our experience. Does that make sense? Like it, it's just the, it, it's, it's just a very, very important thing to understand is that that language that we are, we're talking through isn't that which we're trying to describe. And that's something because you have these two people that are wanting to create a synergistic relationship. In order to create a synergistic relationship, we're trying to understand what each aspect really, really wants. And the challenge with that is we normally do it through language. We normally do it through language and language is just a way that we have made up to, to, to communicate experience. You know, a, a, good, a good way to put this, good way to put this, is that, we have the sensory experience. Like we have the experience. So like you actually do something. Oh, it's on the piss a bit there. There we go. We have the, the sensory uh, experience, right? And then from that, you know, from that sensory experience, we then, we we're out there in the world where, you know, we're, we're talking to people, we're, we're having relationships, and we have that experience. Then from that, in our mind, we have the experience of the experience, right? So right now, you can remember what you were doing an hour ago. Does that make sense? So you have the experience, and you have the experience of the experience. And then if I ask you what you did this morning, you then use language, you use language when you then go and tell someone. And what you're trying to do with this language is, is go through your experience of the experience in your mind and try to explain, you know, how it was. So can you see the absolute, let's use a really good word for this. Can you see the absolute fuckery? of humans over here trying to take the sensory experience that they had, then experience the experience internally, then use language to now try to communicate it to someone else when you understand that the map is not the territory. And even if they do an amazing job with the map and it looks just like the map of Australia, it's still absolutely nothing like this amazing huge continent with all of these things that are happening on it. And so what happens is, is that everyone's over here trying to understand what everyone else wants. And the problem is, is that no one really knows and no one really knows what's going on because we're using, we're using a very, very, very incomplete uh, uh, model to, to do that. And, and what happens is that there's a lot of breakdown. You see, there's a lot of breakdown with that. And so here's what we got to, we got to really get to. I'm going to do an amazing session with this. Is there is a process that you can use to, to leave your energy behind. 
and step into the perspective of this other person and then understand what it is that they are really truly experiencing. And when we experience what they're experiencing, we do not have to use this, this lame uh, way of uh, understanding their world called language. So what we get to do, and we're going to do this process, instead of trying to understand what they want here and trying to get it and try to figure it out, we can actually go into this sensory, uh, sorry, this experience of the experience, and we can truly understand what they want. How does that sound? What if you, and I could take you through, if you have a conflict in your life, that you could actually go and experience their perspective the best we can and truly understand it? Because because here's a few things to really, really, really get. By the way, who'd be excited to learn that? It's called the perception shift, the three chair exercise. It's a brilliant one. It's a brilliant, it's a brilliant session. So what's really crucial is that Behavior is the highest form of information we have available. Behavior. We, because talk and uh, you know, promises and everything else can change, what someone does truly shows what, what's really the map that they're following in their life. Second, so can everyone, can everyone get that, that uh, that behavior is the highest form of communication. So behavior really communicates. If you're in a synergistic relationship or if you want to be in one, behavior is what you really look for. Not words, nothing else, just, just behavior, action. The second thing to understand is that all behavior has a positive intention. All behavior has a positive intention. So, even the worst behavior we can think of. So um, Russia's invasion of uh, Ukraine, horrendous. The actual intent behind there is, is of, of someone to wanting to try to look after their homeland. They actually think it's a good thing. Does that make sense? Every behavior has a positive intention. People say to me, but Chris, what about some absolutely horrendous things like uh, you know, like like rape or you know, uh, you know, murder and these things. And it's like, well, there's a positive intent there, and it might sound and seem absolutely horrendous to even think that, but there might be a little kid in there that's just trying to be noticed or be loved. And none of us can say trying to be noticed or be loved is a negative intention. Does that make sense, everyone? So I'm not saying that the behavior is anything they should do. What I'm suggesting is that there is an unmet and positive intention behind there. And if we can understand what the true intention is, let's say that someone's cheating on their husband, the positive intention might just to, to feel validated and feel seen. Does that make sense? So I'm not, I'm not saying that the behavior is, is condoned. I'm saying that there's an intent behind there that at its essence is actually positive and sweet and, 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 and unmet. And what a shame it is that we don't have the ability to, well, we do, we do have the ability, but what a shame it is that we don't know how to help people to find other ways to, to fill that unmet need. Isn't that true? Whatever, can I get a true? Isn't that true that, that it's a shame that we don't have the ability to really find, well, we do have the ability, but we don't have more people being able to find that and say, you know what you really want? You want to feel safe in your country. What you really want is you want to be seen. And you, you, you don't know any other way to do it. So you're going to go do a horrendous act. But what you really have is this intent. And when you truly get this, that behavior is the highest form of communication. And that there is always a positive intention, something that that aspect in them is trying to achieve. If we can understand that positive intention, we can find ways to help them get it that suit us. You see? I love you, Ivana. Please don't take it specifically. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, no worries. I get it. 
I don't have time to watch it all. The, the point, the read it all rather, the point is the, the point is that if you can understand that intent, then you can, then you, knowing what you want, can find a way to create the synergistic relationship. Without knowing that positive intent, that which they're really trying to achieve, their true outcome, then you can't create the synergistic relationship. And so here's what I want you to understand, Magnetic Mind Masterclass, my amazing creators, is that it's your responsibility, if you have a relationship that's not working out, it's your responsibility to use the exercise we're about to do to be able to understand their true desires. And once you understand their true desires, their true uh, intent, then you can ask yourself, do you want to be a part of giving them that? And what is it that you want to be given back? But without this information, you're literally just shooting in the dark, just guessing. And they're guessing too, because language is a really lame way to try to explain the, uh, the world we live in. So who's up to take responsibility um, for their part in a synergistic relationship and to, to truly make the decision uh, about which one of uh, these that you want to play in? You know, do you want to play aloof, functional? Do you want to be controlling or controlled or codependent? Which one do you want to be? Hey, Chris here again. I hope you really enjoyed that session. Obviously, it was streamed live to our Magnet Mind Masterclass uh, coaching program. If you'd like to be involved in that program, please do reach out. Uh, we do have spaces you can uh, apply for and you can join. So do let us know if it's something for you. And again, thank you so much for your support. Subscribe, like, and share this content so we can reach millions of people just like you and help them become conscious creators. Have a great day. Stay super conscious.